Why hello there and welcome back to another episode of Trader Steve's journey across Gilinor to collect as many rare items as he can get his grubby little mitts on. Trader Steve is starting his journey in the Grand Exchange chunk, but for every new rare item he can add to his collection that's worth more than 1 mil, he can unlock a new adjacent chunk, with Trader Steve's ultimate goal, obtaining a quest cape. Now I've been working towards my first major boss on this account for quite a while, and I think we're ready. Well, not really, but I think we're ready to at least give it a attempt. In the last episode, we unlocked a very important chunk, the God Wars chunk. With it, we unlocked four new bosses, and today we're going to finally try out our first one. Today we're going to try our hands at killing Saradomen. Saradomen, I think, is the only realistic boss right now I could effectively solo because you can kill it pretty effectively with actually just a crossbow. The other God Wars dungeon bosses would require a Bow of Fair Denon maybe at least, and that's really far away, we'd have to get all the way Prif Dennis for that. Or we need an Arc Light, which is even further away than that, as we'd have to go all the way to Zaya as well as the Desert. And Armadil I think is just too difficult right now with my low defenses, really that just leaves Saradomen. In the last episode, we power leveled our range up to level 90, which I think that's actually a decent enough level to give it a solid try. So luckily, we already have some of the more expensive items we need for this boss, but we still need to go purchase a few minor things. So we're going to go buy ourselves, for one, God Dehyde. We're going to go for Zamorak Dehyde. We're going to buy a Varox Helm just for the increased tankiness, mostly just to tank the minions, some Dehyde Boots, and some Enchanted Diamond Dragon Bolts. This setup is workable, it's a pretty low level overall, but with our reasonably high range stat, I think we should be able to get some kills. We're also going to bring ourselves the Serpentine Helm and a Blowpipe, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so we're heading over to the God Wars dungeon for the first time. I'm uh, a little nervous. What? I, where is this knight? Why is he so hard to see? I am literally blind. What? My god, this guy's like a winter fox or something, Try not to be seen. Oh my god, I think we can finally enter. Yes! Now one of the drawbacks of doing Saradomen in particular, getting the kill count to get into the room, which you need 40 of, pretty damn slow. Now there are workarounds for this, such as ecumenical keys, but I can't get those, and I nor will I ever be able to get them because they're in the wilderness. Not strictly required for the challenge I'm doing. Now there might be another option, but let's just see how long this takes to begin with. Okay, that was a while. That took about 10 minutes just to get the kill count. Not the end of the world if I could do very long trips, but I'm not going to be able to, not only because I'm bad at this, but also just because my stats and gear, not the best. But it's time, let's try this out, maybe we can get lucky, just get a quick armadil crossbow or something. Now the strategy for this kill is very simple, all you have to do is really run around in circles. I have some tiles marked here, you don't have to be even exactly on the tile, but you're just going to be kiting around the main Ziliana boss around the room. Now the reason we brought the Serpentine Helm and the Blowpipe is so we can have a 100% chance of Venoming the minions. Because my DPS is so low, we kind of have to do this or else we will run out of time trying to kill the minions after, which is going to be no good. Once we've hit each of the minions once, we just proceed to attack Ziliana with our crossbow, kite around the room until she's dead. The strategy is pretty simple, but we're going to take a fair bit of damage just from the minions as we run around. Oh my god, Ziliana is so tanky. Even with a crossbow, even with 90 ranged, I feel like having rigor would be very helpful here, but uh, we can't afford that yet. Okay, so the crossbow is a bit slow, but we did get our very first kill for some... Hey, a bruise and restores, that's actually pretty useful. <laughs> oh my god, you're joking me. <laughs> god Sword Shard 2 on my first minion kill. Well, second, I guess. Well, that's pretty damn lucky. Not worth a ton, but we'll take the collection log slot. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. So we got our first couple kills at Ziliana, and it went okay. I mean, it took a long time to get there, and the kills are pretty slow, but at least we know that killing Ziliana now is possible. There is one key upgrade I would like to get, though, first, because I'm going to be using a crossbow for so long. And to do that, we're going to turn to our newest best moneymaker right now, Floor 5 Hallowed Sepulchre. So excited I unlocked this in the last episode. Now we finally have a chance of getting the Ring of Endurance from the Grand Hell of Chest, which is worth over 30 mil right now. Not to mention the loot is just way better throughout. So it's time to learn the fifth floor. Oh my god, we finally did it. Took a hallowed token, but we got to the end. 
took me a while to figure out exactly how this works. Each floor you get an extra two minutes added to your time, so I didn't realize the previous floors actually do matter. Can we get the Ring of Endurance on our first chest? No, of course not. So, the fifth floor is actually pretty difficult. Um, not so much the floor itself, I don't find it that much more difficult than three and four, but finishing in enough time is the hard part. You can see uh, my completion rate's not great right now. We've only finished about a quarter of them, but we're practicing. Well, I messed this one out, but that's not the important part. The important part is 93 agility. We've been slowly improving at the 5th floor of the Hounds Outbooker, no ring so far unfortunately, but now we're finishing about 2 thirds of all our runs which is a vast improvement, and we're getting a pretty consistent 1 mil per hour if not more, plus a chance at the ring, so just overall an incredible method. So we've done 70 laps of the Hallowed Sepulchre and 45 successful coffin completions, with the vast majority of those failures being in the first 20 or so. So we're improving and we're making a lot of money. Now in the last episode we unlocked this chunk right here, the Western Vrock Bank chunk for lack of a better name, and this signifies a pretty big midterm goal we're going to start in today's episode. Firstly though, we need to finish Gertrude's cat. There we go, we got ourselves a kitten. Why in the world would I need a kitten? Because there we go, we're up to 62 successful loots of the Hallowed's Coffin. Kind of a random place to stop, but we're going to start cashing out on some of our loot. We have a bunch of hallowed sacks to open, and a bunch of loot in the bank, and I think with all of this combined we might just be able to afford ourselves our most expensive item yet, I think. Okay, we're going to sell everything off including the god sword shard that we spooned on one kill count. And after claiming everything we're up to 23 million gold, which is by far our largest amount to date, plus we have another mill just in lockpicks. And with it we're going to unlock a pretty expensive item, the Twisted Buckler. Alright everyone, put your hands together for our 100th item! Pretty much a third of the way done, right? <laughs> This is a bit of a questionable purchase, but I've decided to go for it for one because I want to try out Sarah Doan more and this will be a pretty big upgrade. And two because the crossbow, the dragon crossbow in particular, is going to be our best ranged weapon for a long time. The bow of Ferdinand would be amazing, but, but we can't get it until we've completed Song in the Elves, which is quite a far distance away. We could of course get the twisted bow, but that's so expensive, we're not getting that for a while. So the buckler I think is going to get a lot of use because their crossbow is going to get a lot of use. Okay, there's no hiding it anymore, we need to unlock a new chunk, and where are we going? We're going to the desert. Now I was watching a video about Leagues 4, and in it they were rating all the regions based on their strength, and that kind of convinced me the desert is very highly rated, and it really comes down to a bunch of pretty new additions overall. The desert is jam packed with high level content now, from things like the Tombs of a Masket, which actually isn't that hard to unlock, to things like Desert Treasure which will give me Ancient Magics, Desert Treasure 2, the desert is even required to unlock next because the Frozen Door mini quest requires Desert Treasure. There's just so many major things here, and a few other smaller things as well. Unlocking the desert can even potentially fix my Sarah Doman kill count issue, the fact it takes 10 minutes is kind of ridiculous, but there might be a solution hidden in the desert. Okay, we're taking our first step into the desert. Okay, well, like more of our second step, honestly. But with the Twisted Buckler, we're going to unlock this chunk here, the Tourist Trap Hideout, which means it's time to get started with some desert quest lines. Okay, we're back for my revenge, this time with uh, marginally better gear. I don't know if the Twisted Buckler is going to be an absolute game changer, but it will definitely make things better. This thing gives a whopping 10 range strength and 18 range accuracy. It's really good. Now you might be thinking this run is going moderately well, I mean like look at how many supplies I have left. These are strength potions. I don't know how that happened, I've done this once before but oh my god, why do bruise and strength potions look the same? We're literally running off peaches only right now. 
Ah, we gotta go. Oh god, we definitely have to practice Ziliana more. Our trips are way too short right now and the GP per hour, probably not that great. And to make sure I never forget about Ziliana, Crum has immortalized the commander and sent me one in the mail. Now she just sits there staring at me. Today's video is sponsored by the old school RuneScape YouTuber Crum. I'm always excited to be working with Crum because they create some of the most unique old school RuneScape figurines and are a really close member of the community. Crum's store is some of the most iconic RuneScape characters, but uh, in miniature form. They have King Black Dragon, Zuck, Jad, and most recently, Commander Ziliana, which looks absolutely amazing. Each model that they sell is resin cast, which produces a really high quality model, then after is airbrushed and painted by hand. I've owned several of Crum's models now for years, and I can honestly say they are incredibly high quality and they're clearly made with a lot of care. Right now, all the resin cast models have been restocked, so it's a great time to pick one up. This week only, Crum is even offering a 20% discount on your order just by using my code FLIPPING at checkout. It's a great way to support both of us directly, and thanks again to Crum for sponsoring. Right now we're doing actually a little smithing training. Um, for what reason? Well, apparently Tourist Trap actually has a smithing level requirement, uh, which I somehow did not have. How I didn't have 20 smithing at this point beats me, but we got it. Now, unfortunately, we won't be able to get too far in this quest line. We can run down to the hideout and enter it, but pretty quickly we're going to be asked to go somewhere that is a little inconvenient to get to. We need to get over to the Bebedin camp, and that kind of brings up an interesting dilemma. How do I get around the desert? What's the best route to take to get to different quest locations? Because the desert is home to multiple completely dead chunks. So it's a little bit of a minefield actually we're gonna have to navigate here. Now before we get any further into the desert, we need to figure out our best route to take in advance. So I went ahead and watched through every quest guide that involves the desert and tracked every location you go to and here is the map I have come up with. Every quest sign on the map is a legit chunk that I will need to unlock for a quest at some point and every X is a dead chunk. I'm like 95% sure. Not 100% because there are other reasons you might have to come to a desert in another quest but I think this is a good place to start. So what exactly can we make of this? Well, to start off, there's a few chunks that are going to be very problematic, but we're not going to worry about those yet. Those are the ones in the corner. The Ruins of Uzer and the Desert Treasure 2 start location. I don't know how we're going to do that or if there's a better way to get there, but let's not worry about that yet. Let's look at the main bulk of quest locations, and it actually looks like there's a pretty reasonable way to get around. The paths are actually all connected, or so it appears to be. At first glance, I thought we could avoid every single dead chunk, but there's actually one issue. Now, it looks like we want to take this route through Narda, south through the Ruins of Ulek, and around to Menifos. But unfortunately, these two chunks here, you can't traverse. They are connected, but there's no way to get to the other one from the north, which means we have to probably unlock one of these two chunks, either the Agility Pyramid, which I don't think any quests go there, but at least unlock something or this empty chunk in the Caridian Desert, which has no content, but would be a lot more convenient for getting around the desert. This might seem a little bit irrelevant, but these are pretty important decisions because we have a very limited amount of chunks and there are still a lot of quests to do. So we had about six mil left over from our last big money-making grind from the Sepulcher. So we're doing a bit of a bank sale here to actually afford another kind of expensive item, but one that's way cheaper than it's historically been, the Ring of Suffering. We're buying this again in hopes that this will help our Ceredomen trip. This may have all been a bit of a waste of money for now, but the Ring of Suffering is a good item. We will get use out of it. Now the first thing we have to do is imbue it, which we actually just have enough points for. And look at that. Four prayer bonus, 20 in each defense bonus. This will make us a bit tankier. Okay, so with the Ring of Suffering, we're gonna unlock the southern chunk with the Smoke Dungeon in it. That's pretty much all it has to offer. Luckily, it is a quest location for Desert Treasure, so we have to come here. The Smoke Dungeon also does have Dust Devils in it. They can't be assigned until we've done Desert Treasure 1, but hey, we could kill them if we wanted. So that was actually a pretty decent trip. I think that'll be our fourth kill of the trip. Four or five, can actually remember. Hey, and a hit points level, that's interesting timing. These upgrades have definitely made a difference, but the accuracy just feels still so low. 
Ceridome is just way too tanky, but that would be our 13th kill of Zilliana. So because I was a little irresponsible and just spent all of my money on a couple big ticket items, we need to make some more. Now we're finishing up our first Demonic Gorillas task, still I forgot that I hadn't finished it. Unfortunately no Zenite from the first task, but that's to be expected, it was only about 150 kills or so. There we go, task done. That's actually our 40th task as well, so a nice point boost from that. Okay, next task is Trolls. Um, that is actually fine now. Doing Trolls is way more convenient now because we have Mountain Trolls, not those stupid river trolls that no one should ever kill. For some reason, we are training attack with an Abyssal Dagger. Don't know why, but doesn't really matter. What's more important is 80 attack. Oh my god, look at that. Same task, we also reached 80 defense. Not bad. Okay, so we have actually quite a bit of Slayer points saved up, although we don't want to blow through all of them because we still need to be careful. We don't run out of points and get a task we can't do. But we're going to go ahead and actually unlock the Vampires as a Slayer task, mainly because doing Firewatch Sentinels is a pretty decent moneymaker and doing it on task would be even better. So I think that's worth unlocking. And we're also going to grab ourselves Bigger and Badder, which I honestly thought I had already unlocked, but apparently not. But that will still leave us with over 200 points. Hey, there we go, Black Demons, 134 of them. So it's time to head back to the Black Demons for another decent chance at a Zenite. Oh yes, there it is. Near to the end of our second task, we finally got ourselves a Zenite. Really excited about that. Our first one, new collection log slot. Now as soon as Steve gets a new item in his inventory that is part of the collection, a new chunk has to be unlocked. I can't sell this first one. So it's going in the collection tab and we're unlocking a chunk with it. Now once we get subsequent ones, we can of course sell them. But as per the rules, this is going in the bank. But with it, we can unlock ourselves a new chunk. Now the two major things I want to unlock in the desert first are Desert Treasure 1. So we get access to Ancients, Nex, and a few other important things. And I want to complete Beneath Cursed Sands so we can unlock the Tombs of a Masket, the third raid. Two major pieces of content that we can unlock actually in the nearish future. But because we're so close to the Desert Treasure 1 start location, I think I'm going to head there first. So we're going to unlock this chunk right here, which appears once again to be an entirely dead chunk. But it has this important quest location, the Desert Treasure 1 Circle. So we're good to go there potential. This is what this account does to you. You just kill everything, examine everything, brains racing, can I make money with Uthanki, camel meat? Probably not. Hey, there we go, 73 Slayer at the Demonic Gorillas. Nothing too important, but each Slayer level is bringing us closer to something actually useful. <laughs> so there is our second task complete for Demonics, still only on one Zenite. So the entire task is actually a 9.3 mil task, but if you include just the regular loot, not bad, 2.1 mil just in alcohols. We'll go ahead and sell all that off along with some Hallowed Sepulchre loot. We're looking at nearly 5 mil. Okay, so we're going to invest that money into two cheaper items for once. We have been blowing all our cash on some expensive upgrades, but now we're going to go for some cheaper ones. The Fremenic Kilt and the Draconic Visage. Both about 2.3 mil items, and that will allow us to unlock two more desert chunks, which will bring us nicely to the Desert Treasure 1 start location. Okay, so the first new chunk we can unlock here is the Bandit Camp. A few interesting things here, there's the Bandit Bar, which we could use to buy uh, an item called the Bandit Brew, but I think we actually have to complete Desert Treasure 1 to even do that, so we'll leave that for now. We get a general store and just a, a bunch more cactuses. <laughs> okay, it's finally time to move on to the Bebedin camp. Mostly all just quest locations here. The most important thing, of course, the start location for Desert Treasure 1. But with this, we can also now complete Tourist Trap, which is uh, pretty nice. It's nice to finish what you started. Okay, this might be the first time in the history of this game that someone has uh, taken the smithing experience from this quest. Could of course put it in Agility or Thieving, but uh, instead we're going to get ourselves 10 smithing levels and Tourist Traps done with. 
Oh my god, 7D construction, all just from the Hallowed Sepulchre. It's been adding up slowly over time. We're getting like maximum like 7k per hour construction experience when we're running this. Definitely nothing to scoff at over hundreds of hours. Now I've been having so much fun with the Sepulchre. Just the chance to get in the ring has really distracted me from how slow the agility training is. But we just hit another big level, 94 agility. I think we've unlocked like everything in the game. There might be one shortcut left, maybe, but I'm pretty sure the one at 93 is the highest, which means we pretty much have everything. At this point, we're just grinding out for the Ring of Endurance. Okay, so we're going to dump some of our loot from the Sepulchre. After selling it off, we're up to 3.3 mil. I've actually scoped out a pretty cheap item we haven't got yet, the Magic Fang. Thanks to uh, bots, probably, pretty much all of these Zalra uniques have tanked so hard. So we're able to pick that one up for 1.8 mil, and that is another item knocked off the list. And one more step we can take into the desert. Okay, so it's time to unlock another pretty important quest location for Desert Treasure 1, the Pyramid. <laughs> now, although this is mostly just a quest location, I have some ideas of how we could actually make money in this chunk, but we're gonna have to wait until we finish Desert Treasure 1 to do it. Pretty much right now, it's just a unenterable pyramid, but it has potential. Oh man, you need Desert Treasure 2 to dismantle rings, that's disappointing. Oh, I thought I was so smart for a second there. Well, we're dumping these back. So there is 88 successful loots of the Grand Hallow Coffin. We're quickly approaching halfway to the drop rate. So expected value, we should be having another uh, 15 mil. Not that it matters, we're gonna have to keep the first ring we get anyway. Okay, so we're able to scrounge our bank for a bit more. We got mostly just some runes that we're stacking up that we don't need right now. And that's brought us up to three mil once again. And that's gonna allow us to buy the other really cheap Zalra Unique right now. So that's another item knocked off the list. So I'm going to take a bit of a detour here. We're going to unlock this chunk here, the quarry. In it, we can complete Anakra's Lament, which will give us access to the Camulet. The sandstone worth so much. The Camulet will allow us to teleport to this chunk directly, which I think will be pretty handy, especially for when we get Ancients and we want to switch our spellbook. This guy is such a bastard. Why is this guy so mean? So there we go, quest complete. From it, we get the Camulet, which we could uh, imbue it to have unlimited charges. I'm gonna do it, why not? Completionist content, was it worth a mil? I'm not sure. So we should be able to teleport to the quarry with this. Hmm, oh no. We need the desert diary to teleport to the surface. That's gonna be a, uh, that's gonna be an issue. I don't think I can do that. Okay, that might've been a waste of time and or money. We need to rebuild our bank a little bit here. I noticed black dehyde bodies were just ridiculously underpriced. We're gonna start off by just alking 70 of those. We'll take that, 200k profit in about five minutes, not bad. Because <laughs> we're on the quest for another Demonic Gorilla's task. I think it's time we actually extend Black Demons, why not? I mean, that's mostly what we're doing Slayer for right now. We might as well extend the task when we get them. Where the hell is it? Ah, of course, this is the Black Demon. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go ahead and extend this task. Oh yes, look at that. It was meant to be 205 Black Demons, that is gonna take a while, but that's what we signed up for. <laughs> Okay, bit of a throwback method here, but before I go ahead and start my multi-day, probably, Demonic Gorilla's grind, we're gonna go ahead and actually buy some colored boots from the Mauritania clothes shop. Something they can just be slowly selling while we do other content. Right now, they're actually going for a pretty inflated price. They tend to do that, I'm not sure, mostly just PK clans, I think, buy these things. But if you look at red boots, not even selling for 10k each, which means we could try to make our own price here. We could sell them for maybe 4 or 5k if we're getting kind of greedy. Realistically, they'd sell maybe closer to 3k, but, but you know me, I'm always pretty greedy. 7,000! Oh, there's an item. Not the one we want, but we will take it. Ballista Limbs. It is a collection log, that is nice. Okay, next morning, um, our yellow boots sold off for a reasonable amount, 2400. Red boots, uh, we got greedy, so they didn't sell overnight, but we're gonna sell them off now for three times less, and we're still gonna make money on it. Okay, Demonic Gorillas are not great experience per hour, but you just have to kill so many of them that eventually adds up. There is 74 Slayer, one level away from Gargoyles, which is a very important one, in the sense that we have to block them. 
We can't do Gargoyles because there's no quest location in the Mauritania Slayer Tower, so we have to be mindful. Next level, we're going to need to have a block slot available for that. Yes, finally, a Zenite Shard that we can actually sell. We actually got kind of lucky on this. We got it, I think, at 450 kill count, so 2 and 450 is not bad. I'm excited, though. We can finally actually sell this one. We already have one in the collection, so that's an 8.5 mil, 9 mil boost to our cash stack, which we really need right now. Okay, we finished up the task. Unfortunately, our luck did not continue, but still a very nice Black Demon task. We didn't have much loot left over besides the Zene, of course, but we're able to dump it in there for 8.4 mil. Beautiful. And that's brought our cash stack up to nearly 13 mil, which will allow us to buy a couple of new collection items. I am so stupid, guys. I, I don't even know how I didn't realize this. I was so focused on the desert portion of Desert Treasure 1 that I completely forgot. We have to do multiple precursor quests that are not easy to do. Temple of Ikov, that's a bit out of the way. The dig site, that's also out of the way. Waterfall quest, I mean it's spread out over Gilinor. I can't do this right now, what am I thinking? You know, it's not the end of the world, we would have had to unlock these locations eventually anyway, and we are closer now to completing Desert Treasure 1, but it's this is a huge commitment right now. We, we just do not have the money to complete this in any reasonable amount of time, so we're going to leave this for a minute and focus on a much closer goal, Sofenheim. Sofenheim is actually not that far away, and to get there I think we need three more chunks. So we're going to buy the Abyssal Dagger Poisoned, the Arim's Rope Skirt Zero, and the Pharaoh Scepter, which I think will actually get some use. Oh, Fashion Scape, look at that. The time has finally come. We have to unlock a dead chunk. Doesn't feel great, but I don't think there's any way around this. Like I was mentioning earlier, it was either this chunk here or the Agility Pyramid. Sure, the Pyramid gives more content, but our Agility is so high level, I just don't think the Pyramid is ever relevant at this point. So I'm just actually just going to pick something that will make it more convenient to get through the desert and quicker. This Caridian Desert chunk right here. Okay, so what do we have here? We have, um... Oh, we got some crocodiles. Okay, there's something here. Crocodiles and uh, banana tree. Okay, we can pick some bananas. We got some cactuses and some jackals, but that is, uh, that's it. Nice views, though. Okay, so it's time to go south into another fairly empty desert chunk, but this one has an important quest location to start to Itchlathan's little helper which is realistically the start of the quest line that will lead us all the way to the Tombs of Amascot. Now with our third and final item, we get to unlock Sofenheim, which actually has a fair bit of content in it. We have multiple quest locations, we have Pyramid Plunder, the Sofenheim Dungeon has some interesting things in there, a bunch of water refill locations, I, I don't know. There are definitely some interesting things in the city. Okay, there we go. Itchelin's little helper's done with. A bit of experience, um, but most importantly actually, a hundred quest points. I didn't even realize we're getting that. A hundred quest points is actually really important because that has just unlocked us another Slayer block slot. We're gonna need that really soon, literally in one more Slayer level. We're gonna need that block slot, so it came just in time honestly. Quest points are not easy to get either, like to get to 150 is going to be challenging. Why is it every single time I underprepare for a quest, the boss is hard and every time I overprepare, it's like a piece of cake. There we go, the contact quest is done with, which means we have everything we need to start the Beneath Cursed Sands quest, which, which is the final hurdle until we can unlock the Tombs of Amascot and complete our very first raid. So we have all the precursor quests done, the only thing standing in our way right now is the locations we need to unlock a fair bit of the southeastern desert, including the ruins of Ulak, Necropolis, and Narda, but we'll have to leave that to the next episode, but coming soon, our very first raid completion. But I'm excited to give it a try, but that's gonna have to wait until the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one as always, and I will see you next time. Now before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Aleandra, Mitch Reinders, The Hybrid, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. You guys are awesome. I do really appreciate it. 
Also, thank you to Kapersky, YoYoSub89, and NDM0001 for being subscribed at the Runite tier. Thanks everyone again, and I'll see you next time.